knowledge has its own sense of fulfillment. There is this sweetness when knowledge is gained. I am Jeremiah Ajuda Dusu, the author of Jad's Business and Financial Accounting. Welcome back to class. Okay. So let's continue from where we stopped. Okay. So last uh, class we had was on reserve deductions, right? Where you, you know, create um, reserve for general specific purpose, right? And then we talked about how to treat it at consolidation level. Okay. All right. Today we're looking at um, something a little bit different. Something a little bit different. Um, of course, it's still a group. They were looking at um, acquisition, acquisition during the year. Okay. Um, so what um, we've been doing before now is that the most of the times, or most of the, most of what we looked at is that uh, the year of acquisition. Is not the year of consolidation okay so there we are able to establish the pre-acquisition and post-acquisition element okay good but now you're saying acquisition during the year so it means that we acquire the subsidiary in a particular year and then we are preparing a consolidation in that same year okay don't forget that when it comes to reserve or profits and loss uh, in consolidation, we are looking at pre or post acquisition elements. And for CP and L, which is consolidation profit and loss, we are concerned more of what post acquisition figures or post acquisition what elements. So here we're looking at profit and loss. So it means that it is entirely. Uh, income and expenditure items or profit and expense items, right? So it means that because we have acquired during the year, so it means that in that year, we're going to have pre acquisition incomes and expenses, and we're going to have post acquisition incomes and expenses. Of course, that is for the subsidiary that we're talking about here. So, what we're saying here that when you have this scenario, we are only going to what concentrate on what the income and expense items that what caught within or that falls within the what period after what acquisition of course it's easier where you can what get your monthly what statement so let's say you acquired in 2016 so let's say acquisition date Let's say it's what? Um, let's say it's 31st December. Oh no, let's say 31st uh, February, okay? 2016. Okay, January 2016. So it means that January and February has the pre acquisition elements. Why? March, April, May, June, July, August, September, down to December has the post acquisition element. So it means that for this very period, okay, so your pre will be what? January and what? February. Then your post will be what? March to what? December. So, but because of the fact that we are preparing consolidation profit and loss, we are only going to be concerned with what the post acquisition what element of the subsidiary. So it means that, of course, the amount reported is for a year. So it means that we are only going to what bring out the what the portion that relates to what the post acquisition period. So this is March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's ten months. So ten months is for posts. Why the other two months is for what? Pre. 
Of course, the assumption here is that the profit is what accruing evenly. But you understand one fact: if you have access to the what the monthly reports, you can simply get the what reports that fall between March to December, and then you consolidate, right? Good. But here we're looking at the fact that you have a whole year report, but that same year is the year you acquired. So you want to know which part, since we're talking about CP and L, CP and L concentrates or has to do with what post acquisition what profit and loss items. So you want to know the one that falls what in the period that what that relates to post. So here, this is pre, this is post. So if, for instance, we have sales. And then we have cost of what? Sales. Okay, let's say this is the what? Holding company. This is the what? Subsidiary. Subsidiary, of course, holding company is full year. Subsidiary is going to be full year. And then we have subsidiary what? For the part here. Okay? Before you now talk about what? Adjustment. And then you have CP and what? Else. So the point I'm trying to make here is that let's say, for instance, this sales for holding company is what? Let's say 100. Subsidiary is full year. Let's say it's what? 60. Now don't forget, we acquired in 2016. This is uh, uh, what? February 2016. But because of the fact that it is during the year, we want to get the post acquisition what? Elements. So it means that for this sales, for this subsidiary, now this is full year. So for this part here, it will be what? 10 months of this. That's assuming that it has accrued what? Evenly. So that means it's simply what 10 over 12 times what 60 over 1 here. Yeah. So what do you have? If we have 10 over 12, okay. Ten divided by what? 12. Okay, times 60. That's 50, okay? So we have 50. Okay? That's what? 50. So it means that what? For the part here, this is what? 50. So it means that for the CP and L to be what? 100 plus 50, not 60. So it will be what? 150. Of course, as you there's no adjustment, okay? So the same way, if you have cost of sales here, let's say cost of sales here is 80. Of course, that means your growth of this what? Is 20. So let's assume that your what? Full year for sub here, let's assume it is what? 40. Of course, but well, let's, let's call it 50. So here will be what? 10. So for the part here, that will be what? 10 divided by 12 times what? 50 over 1. So what do you have? Ten divided by twelve times fifty. That is forty one point seven. Let's say forty two. So this will be what forty two. So this here will be what eight as the gross profit. So for the word CP and L, instead of eighty plus fifty, it will be eighty plus forty two. Okay, so that should be one two two, right? So if you take this out, you have 150 minus 122. So here we have what? 28. You see? So because we are acquiring during the year, we are only going to be concerned with what? Items that falls in the post acquisition period, which is the period after acquisition. Of course, one year is the full amount, but because it is during the year, that means in that same year, the value you have has pre and post. And CP and L, of course, I've thought already, has to do with post acquisition elements. So it means that you have to now, what? Apportion that full year into that part that falls within the word post acquisition element. That is what you take to the CP and L. Okay? Even when you have adjustments to your adjustment elements, you have to ensure that you split that part that qualifies to the post action element, that is what falls into the word adjustment. Okay? So if you're not going to look at uh, the 
what the uh, the group level now you know you normally you normally have uh, what you call retained profits brought forward that we are just pre and post in our previous scenarios but in this scenario that we have action during the year it means that any brought forward profit from the previous year for the subsidiary will not form part of the cp and l because it's going to be entirely pre so if your return brought for your return profit brought forward from the previous year, of course, this is 2016, for instance. So any return profit from 2015 for the subsidiary will not what form part of the what group because it is pre. And don't forget that your post is what comes what the CP and L. Okay. So basically, what I've said here in summary is that we want to know that when you acquire during the period, we want to know which part of the income and expense item falls to post and which part falls to pre. We are only concerned with items that force to post. So that is what forms part of the consolidated word, profit word and loss. Okay? So take your time, go through. If you have questions, you can reach me on the numbers and tell to reply with the right answers. Let's take a question so we get to understand what's talking about here. Okay, let's quickly take this uh, simple question so you understand what we're talking about here. Okay, so we have uh, the following represents the income statement of King's PLC and Queen's PLC as an effect of 2017. So we have turnover, cost of sales, gross profit, uh, total expense, operating profit, other income, income from sole profit before tax, taxation goes all down that way. So uh, okay, and then we have um, additional information there. King's PLC acquired 90% shares in Queen's PLC on 1st July 2017. Okay, interest and expense of Queen's PLC includes interest on a loan of 20 million received from King's PLC at an annual interest of 5%. Okay, profit are established to accrue even with a very straightforward question. So, consideration schedule, it's a prepared consideration schedule, and then the income statement for 1st July 2017. Okay, all right, so what do we have here? What do we have here? So we have a consolidation word schedule. So in order to make it, you know, uh, understandable here, I'm going to have the full year and the part year. Okay, so we have, um, what do we have there? King. Okay. So we have Queens. So let's call this the full year. And we have Queens again. Let's call it the part year. So we have what? Adjustment. And we have C, P, and what? L. Okay. So we have what's the sales value there? 40,000. So we have uh, 40. 30. Cost of sales. What do we have there? Cost of sales, we have 21,600. We have uh, 16,200. Okay. So that means gross profit here. Gross profit is. Uh, 18,400 okay and then here you have uh, 13,800 so here we're going to have what the total expense here total expense here we have 4,600 here we have um, 3,450 Okay, so what would I give to us here? Yeah? That is uh, operating profit. Kings, operating profit for Kings, 13,800. For Queens, for the full year, 10,350. Okay, so any other thing there? Other income. That income here is two thousand seven hundred, and then here 
is 2070. Get all that from the question. So what do we have now? We have uh, income from subsidiary. Income from subsidiary. What do we have there? This is uh, 800. Nothing here. So we have this. We have this. So we have profit before tax. Profit before tax. 2360. Now what do we have 12420. Okay, so what our tax? What our tax there? 6515-3974. So we have profit after tax. What profit after tax? Thirteen eight four five. And then we have 8446. Okay. But now at this level, we we'll just adjust and prepare the CPM, right? But now, remember, we have this acquisition during the what? Yeah. Question says it was acquired 1st July 2017. So acquisition date. Acquisition date is 1st July 2017. So that means we have pre and what? Post. Pre is what? January to what? June. Then post to the what? July to what? December. Of course, they said what? They said the what? Profit accrued even. So that means it's equal, right? But if it they accrue evenly, they'll give you the what? The uh, format for what? For apportioning it. Okay? But then, uh, of course, practically you can easily get all these from what? The monthly report, right? Okay, so let's go. So we have the pre and we have the post. So but this is CP and remember that CP and has to do with post action item. So we want to know the post action element of all this value. That is what will form the part here here before we consolidate, right? So of course, January to June, January, February, March, April, May, June. That's six months. July, August, November, that, that, that's six months. So it means that what? It's just like half of all these is what comes here, right? Good. So that means 30,000 here we divide it by two. Six, six months, right? Good. So this will be what? 15,000. Okay. So we have 15,000. Excuse me. So this is 200 divided by 2. This is 8,100. So that means when we take this out, what do we have? That's 6,900. That's more like half of this, right? Total expense. That would be half of this as well. That's 3450 divided by 2. We have 1725. So that will give us what? That uh, 5175. That's more like half of this as well. So all that income, this divided by 2. Uh, we have a 2070 divided by 2. Two zero seven zero divided by what two? So we have one zero three five. So income from service, nothing. So we have this. So this plus this. That's six two one zero. So that's more like half of this. Okay. So for tax, of course, if you make half money, you pay half tax, right? So what do we have? Three nine seven four divided by what? Excuse me. Three nine seven four 
3974 divided by 2. So we have 1987. So what do we have? 6210 minus 1. So that's uh, 4223. So that's like half of this. So now we've gotten this now. Okay. Yes. Six two one zero one nine eight seven. Let me check properly. Okay. Six two one zero plus. So this is for the parts here. So this is what we're looking at, right? And then we'll now do the adjustments. So what are the adjustments? What are the adjustments? So the adjustment here. Interest expense of Queen Limited on a loan of 20 million at 5% from Queen. So we have that's intergroup loan, right? So we have loan here to be what? 20 million. Interest is what? 5%. That will be times 20 million, right? So what would that give to us? Excuse me, 20 million, okay, times 0 0.05, that's 1 million. So this is for one year, don't forget, we have pre, we have post, right? So that means we're going to have to take half of it, that's what we qualify to for the adjustment. So if you divide this by 2, we should have 500,000. So that means interest on loan has to now be adjusted. I already taught that. I already taught a class on intra-group um, loans. Okay? So I think we have to adjust. So what's the interest on loan? Interest on loan to one is an expense, to the other is an income, right? So whoever is giving out the loan, the interest is an income. Whoever is uh, receiving the interest is an expense, right? So that means there will be an adjustment at the expense level here, which is what? 500. And then at the other income level here, there will be another adjustment, which is what? 500. And then don't forget that this income from sub 2 is adjusted. I already taught the class on that. I taught the class on what? On income from what? Subsidiaries. Okay? So this is 3,800. That will also leave this place here. 800. Okay, so that is it with the adjustment. So, what do we do? Any other adjustment? None. So, let us quickly proceed. There's no adjustment here. There's no adjustment here. So, we have 40 plus 15, that's 55,000. Okay. Then we have what now? 21,600 plus 8,100. That's 29,700. Because there's no adjustment there. Okay, so we have this adjustment. So this is what? 25. 300 okay so this is this plus this minus this right so we have uh, 4 600 plus 1725 minus 500 as 5 
this to five. So five hundred will be here. Okay. So what do we do? So we have a twenty-five three hundred minus. 5825. That's 19448. For that, if you check this with this with this, it should give you that. Let's check. Okay. So let's check. What do we have here? 13800 plus. 5175 plus 500. So we have 19475. What are we having here? Let's check this place, please. Let's check, let's check. 4600 plus 1725. Okay, minus 500. 5825. Okay, 5825. So what do we now have here? 25300 minus 5825. Okay, this is 19475. So when you check, you're looking at this plus this plus this, plus this, this. So we are good now. Let's proceed. So this is 2700 plus 1035 minus this. Two seven hundred, okay. Uh, plus this one zero three five minus five hundred. So we have three two three five. Okay. So this here yeah, will be dash. So that means this will cancel. So we'll come here will be three eight hundred. Let's go. What do we have here? We have 19475 plus 3235. 3235. That's what? 22710. Okay, so when you check, it will be this plus this minus this. So let's check. 2360 plus 6210 minus 3800. So we have, what do we have there? 20, 2270, this is 2270. Let's check what's happening. This is correct. This is correct. This is correct. 2760, not 2700. This is not the question. So this is 2760. 2760. Okay? So when you add this, 13800 plus 2760. Okay? Plus this, that will be 2360. So that means, yeah, we're going to have. 2760, 2760 plus 1035, okay, minus 500. So this is 3295 because it does not correspond, you can't move. 3295. So that would be Plus 19475. That's 2270. Okay, that's okay now. So when you add everything here, it should give you 227770. So here we have a tax. Tax will be this, okay, uh, plus this. So there's dash here, dash there. So we say six, excuse me, 
6515 plus 1987 okay and the zeros what do we have there 8502 okay so that's the tax when you take that out what comes is 3800 you take this out we have a uh, Two two seven seven zero minus eight five zero two. So we have thirteen two six eight. We have to check again. This plus this minus this. So let's check. We have a thirteen eight four five plus four two two three minus. 3800. So we have 14 So what we have simply done here, what we have simply done here is to get you know the values that qualify for the post acquisition items. Of course, this is the full year, but because we need July to December. So we part of the CP and on. So we have to divide this by two. So that we have all this before we adjust it to get this. Okay. Good. So let's proceed. Now we have the what profit afterwards tax. Right? Good. So let's go. So we can say uh, what uh, kings and it was. Subsidiaries so what do we have now? Consolidated uh, profit and what loss okay for the year ended at the first December two thousand and what seventeen. Turn over is what? 55,000. Cost of sales 29,700. So that gives us 25,300. And our gross profit. Expenses 5,825. So that gives us 19475 and our printing profit. We have what? Other income. What's other income here? 3295. What that gives to us now? 22770. So this is what? Profit before tax. What our tax? Tax is eight five zero two. So this is what fourteen two six eight. So this is your profit after tax. Okay. So what we done? Let's take out minority interest. Let's minority what interest. So what do we do? This is the holding company. This is minority interest. Holding company according to the question is ninety uh, percent. So new minority is what? 10%. So what is the profit after tax? This. There's no preference. There was preference of the larger, but no preference. So that means we're taking this, savvy? So MI will be 10 over 100 times 4, 2, 2, 3. So what do we have? 0.1. Zero 0.1 times 4, 2, 2, 3. We have uh, 422.3, so this is minority interest, right? So we have uh, 422.3 minus 14.268. We have uh, 13.845.7. So this is what 
profit attributable to the loss to the group. Right? So what do we do now? We say less what ordinary dividend. The dividend that the group wants to pay. That's the head, the holding company. What do you have? Four, five, six, eight. Four, five, six, eight. We're taking that out. The question has reserve deductions. So we we'll take out reserve deductions. I'm going to explain that. Reserve deduction from the subsidiary perspective, we have 1,500. So we have reserve deduction. I already explained. There's a class on that. So you take that class. Eh? So we have holding company. Holding company reserve is how much? 2,000. Subsidiary is 1,005. That is for one year. But remember, there's pre, there's post. So the post is what we're taking here. You know, pre element, you no, know, post element to come in. So what's the post? The post here is 1,5 divided by 2, which is what? 7. 50. Let's check. One five divided by two. Seven fifty. Okay. Now this seven fifty, the holding company has ninety percent of it. That will be times zero point what nine. Six seven five. That's what. Uh, six seven five. That would be two thousand plus six seven five. That's two thousand six seven five. Two thousand six seven five. So that's reserve reduction. So we take that out. Two thousand six seven five. So what do we have? We have thirteen eight four five. Point seven minus four five six eight minus two six seven five that'll be six six zero two point seven. So this okay is what? Retain profit for the what? For the year. Okay? So now we'll say what? Retain profit brought forward. So what do we do? It should be retain profit. Well, it have retain profit of the holding company and the post of the word subsidiary. But here, we are quite doing the year. So everything that came, came before the acquisition. So there can be what? Any word uh, uh, post in that word brought forward because now we acquired in this year. That means in this year alone, we already have pre. So anything that's coming from the previous year is going to be part of pre. So it will not even form part of the words the consolidated program because it is post we are concerned about here. So that means retain profit buffer will be that of the holding company alone. How much is that? Six thousand. So we just say six thousand. So we we'll add this is seven two zero six twelve. So this is what the day profits carry forward. The simple question, okay. We just tested acquisition during the year. So what it means is that the, the, the what P and L reported is for a whole year, but we acquired within the year or during the year. So it means in that same year, we're going to have pre and post. And post is what we bring into C, P and L. That's what we have displayed here. Okay? So here we have the Kings, that's the holding company's full year. So that is full year. Then we now what? A portion. We got the year that qualified for post in the figure of the subsidiary. Based on this case, is half half. So that means we divide everything here by two to get to this point before we started what adjusting. Okay, 
Then here we were able to what get out the minority interest value from this to take it out from there. Take out the dividend as usual. Reserve deduction, of course, would have been the holding company and what the part of what the holding company's reserve deduction and the passenger holding the subsidiary. But in this case, it's even at, uh, during the year, so we felt that to get the one that qualified for post before taking the part of the what holding company. That would have done here is one five for a year, but the post is half of the year. 750, then 90% control, 675, added it to the holding company to get 2675. That is how we're going to take out this, to get this. Before we now brought what? The retained profit brought forward. We, did, we don't have to now bring that of subsidiary because it's entirely pre. Only that of the holding company qualified. So now we're going to get this, okay? So take your time, go through. If you have questions, you can read the number on the screen. Let's reply with the right answers. See you next class. Bye-bye.